The first humans to enter Turkey were Cro-Magnons, named such after a place in France. They had significant Neanderthal admixture and were ancestral to all West Eurasians. Cro-Magnons inhabited Turkey in the Upper Paleolithic until they were replaced by newcomers from the south associated with the Zuzuana cluster, ancestors of all modern Europeans, Middle Easterners, North Africans and South Asians. Cro-Magnon DNA still lingered in Turkey up until the AP Paleolithic, uh, which is about 14k years before Christ, and some Anatolian hunter-gatherers of the AP Paleolithic, such as Pinar Basi, had Cro-Magnon patrilineal DNA C1. These Anatolian hunter-gatherers eventually transitioned into farming, being influenced by the Natufians further south in the Levant. Anatolian Neolithic farmers from Barsen were actually not similar to any modern inhabitants of Anatolia, but rather to Sardinians in Europe. In the Copper Age, Iranian and Caucasus-related ancestry made it into Anatolia and replaced the farmers who lived there previously. They brought J, L, R2 haplogroups. Before this point, Anatolians resembled Southern Europeans, but after this point, Anatolians started to resemble Western Asians. At this point in time, they were speaking pre-Indo-European languages, likely related to Afro-Semitic or Minoan languages. In the Bronze Age, Yamnayan Indo-Europeans from Russia found their way into Anatolia via the Black Sea route. They brought with themselves haplogroup R1b and Armenian language. They didn't make a big impact in terms of autosomal DNA, and Armenians have hardly any Yamnaya ancestry. There are other extinct language branches originating from the Yamnayans that lived in Anatolia, such as Hittites. Yamnayans also founded the Greek nation in Greece, after mixing with Minoan-like people who inhabited Greece before. Greeks actually have quite a lot of Yamnayan ancestry, much more than Armenians. By the Iron Age and until 11th century AD, the Greek nation dominated in Anatolia. In the Iron Age, another kind of Indo-European arrived in Anatolia, the Kurds. The Kurds had come from the East and traced their linguistic origins back to the Yaz culture in Afghanistan. However, most of Kurdish DNA, just like Eastern Turks and Armenians, is Copper Age Anatolian. Only a minority is Yaz Aryan. In 11th century, Turkic people reached Turkey. They were mostly Seljuk Turks, resembling modern Turkmens, although Kipchaks have also contributed to the Turkish genome in the form of Crimean Tatar admixture. Turkic or Seljuk admixture is strongest in the southern and western parts of Turkey. Ironically, European or Greek admixture is also strongest in the south and west of Turkey. West Asian or Armenian-like admixture peaks in eastern Turkey. Let's talk more about the Seljuk Turks. They had mostly patrilineal DNA R1a and Q. Those are haplogroups associated with Indo-Europeans. Although Seljuk Turks and Central Asian Turks don't speak Indo-European languages, they have a lot of Indo-European blood from the Scythians, Sarmatians and other Iranic people, perhaps even more than some Southwest Europeans. To sum everything up, there are two distinct clusters of modern Anatolian Turks, the first cluster lives in the west and south of Anatolia and resembles a mixture of Greeks and Turkmens. And the second cluster lives in the east of Anatolia and resembles Kurds and Armenians. If you like the video, leave a like and subscribe. Drop suggestions in the comments down below.